بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد الحمد لله رب العالمين Last time we spoke about the beauty of the greetings of Islam. Last time we spoke about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emphasized upon, upon as salam where subhanallah the religion itself's name comes from the word peace, as salam means to submit yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Last time we spoke about whom, how do we make assalamu alaikum, the etiquette of assalam, and today bi'idhnillah ta'ala we're going to continue on the etiquette of giving assalam, which is something very, very important. We think it's something normal, but the more we come to know the etiquette of assalam, the more we come to know how we can apply it into our today's daily life. Because we get mixed with ladies, we get mixed with Muslim and non-Muslims nowadays. We do not know how do we reply, we should reply, and how do we reply. Bi'idhnillah ta'ala, we'll do our best to help you out. Last time we stopped at the etiquette of we should give salam to those whom we know and those whom we do not know. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi said, the best of Islam are or is that you feed the poor and you give salam to those whom you know and to those whom you do not know. We stopped here last time. Today we'll continue. When and how do we give the salam? It is recommended for the one who is coming in a gathering to initiate the salam. This is point number one today. Who should initiate the salam? If ever there is a gathering. There is a gathering now, someone comes in. Do you say salam to the person who's coming in or the one who's coming in says say the salam? According to the practice of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is recommended for the one who is coming in the gathering to say, As-salamu alaykum. He's coming in the gathering, he says, As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is the way of doing it not the one who is already in the gathering. The one who is coming, he is the one who says, Assalamu alaikum. The second manner of giving salam, today's topic is, it is sunnah for the rider to greet the pedestrian, which means it is sunnah for the one who is riding to give salam to the one who is walking. And it is sunnah for the one who is walking to give salam to the one who is sitting. And it is sunnah for the one who are few in numbers to give salam to those who are big in numbers. And it is sunnah for the young to greet the elder one. So, who has the more rights to start with salam? Let's look at it at the bigger picture. The one who is riding or who is driving, he says salam to those who are walking. And the one who are walking, they make salam to those who are sitting. And the one who are few in numbers, they give salam to those who are big in numbers. And the one who are sitting, they give salam to those who are sleeping. So the one who always in the top gives salam to those who are down. 
and always the younger one they give salam to the old one this is the way that the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught the sahaba 1400 years ago so when we look at it nowadays if you are driving or we are walking like for example now we're walking outside the masjid we see people sitting we say salam to them but there's no problem if someone who's sitting makes salam to someone who's standing no problem but it is more befitting and respectful for the one who are riding make salam to those who are walking those who are walking make salam to those who are sitting this is how it goes that the best way out doing the salam <laughs> making salam the third point is making salam to a stranger stranging is a woman who is a stranger we know very well that we always need to seclude ourselves from a strange woman who is not our mahram for example you're walking on the street this according to the ulama if you see a muslim woman walking on the street there are three scenarios you can say salam to her if you don't fear fitna majority of the ulama says if there's a lady who is alone walking on the street in order to block all the evil don't say salam to her don't say salam to her because this might trigger something in your heart or her heart and make you continue conversing so even according to ahmed bin hanbal majority of scholars know like if ever you find an a lady an old lady who is walking عادي say salam alaykum no problem a group of ladies say salam alaykum no problem if a lady who is attractive walking past by you and then you say salam alaykum they the big time shaytan may make you fall into a fitna salam alaykum oh wa alaykum salam how are you sister now your sister you become sister and brother straight away you share problem you share information you share numbers until you fall into problem so that is why the ulama says if a lady is in seclusion and alone avoid saying salam because saying salam we said it is not wajib it is sunnah but of course if she says assalamu alaikum we reply wa alaikum salam and we walk away if she says assalamu alaikum we have to say wa alaikum salam it is i just mentioned that it is preferable for the young to greet the old yes or no but the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he greeted the young one and nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam he used to walk with the, he used to walk and he would greet the children with assalamu alaikum why the children would be walking would be playing around he would walk past by them and he would say assalamu alaikum why this is in order to show the kids to show respect to them not always they have to say salam if they don't say salam to you does that mean you don't say salam to them no we approach them we say assalamu alaikum to them as well we approach them as well by saying assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah to to the kids the etiquette of greeting people who are for example some of them are sleeping and some of them are awake 
And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam at that moment, whenever he would enter a place where he would find people sleeping and some awake, he would lower his voice in his salam in order not to disturb the others. You don't enter a place where you know some people are sleeping and then you raise the voice, Salaamu Alaikum. You wake them up. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi taught us respect. Even though they are sleeping and you entered the house, we're going to speak about this, and they are all sleeping, you don't raise your voice. Salaamu Alaikum. Salaamu Alaikum. Al Muhim, the main thing you said salam upon entering your house. Or when you enter the gathering, you said Assalamu Alaikum, and those who could hear you, they reply the Salam. You don't need the one who's sleeping to reply to your Salam. This is not necessary. In regards to, so for that. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa he forbade us from initiating salam to the Ahl al-Kitab. Who are the Ahl al-Kitab? The Christians and the Jews. To the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa he forbade us by saying salam alaykum to them. If they Come and say good morning. We say good morning. If ever you feel like saying good morning, good morning. But to say assalamu alaikum to the Ahl al Kitab, don't say it. Assalamu alaikum means the peace of Allah Azza wa be upon you. They don't believe in what we believe. But if they, Ahl al Kitab, Jews and the Christian, they come and then they say assalamu alaikum to you. Then that case, what you do? You reply as Wa alaykum. Wa alaykum. Especially in the place where we are now, they know Assalamu alaykum what it means. Assalamu alaykum. Oh, Assalamu alaykum. They come and ask, Assalamu alaykum. In that case, what we do? We say Wa alaykum. Some of the scholars. They said, it's okay for you to say wa alaykum salam if you know that they said assalamu alaykum to you. But the most authentic opinion is whatever they have said to you, you reply as wa alaykum. They come to you and say assalamu alaykum, you say wa alaykum. Assalamu alaykum wa alaykum. Assalamu alaykum wa alaykum. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. They know this phrase. We say, wa alaykum. We reply to them means, upon you as well. This is the way that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa has taught us how to reply to the Ahl al-Kitab. And last time we spoke about when you pass by a gathering that contains Muslim and non-Muslims. One day the Prophet Muhammad passed by a gathering where there were the Jews and their polytheist people. That was before the Battle of Badr. And Nabi passed by them and he said, Salam. And among them there were the Muslims, Jews, and the, poly, uh, the polytheist. So in that gathering there were three kinds of people. And Nabi passed by and what did he do? He actually, and Nabi he said, Assalamu alaikum to them in order to show that we can still say salam to those people who are there as Muslims. One of the manners of saying salam, which might surprise you, is saying salamu alaikum to someone who is praying. Can we say salamu alaikum to someone who's praying? Some people might say no. Some people might say yes. Uh, 
first of all, before we get into this one, saying assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah to a group of people, if someone, if you pass by a group of people, you say assalamu alaikum, does everyone has to reply to your salam? No. If there is a group, if one of them replied to the salam, that's sufficient. You enter a, a boardroom, a meeting room, someone enter the masjid, say salamu alaikum. If only one of the people around say wa well, alaikum salam, that's sufficient. Because you are in the same gathering. But if you are individually, then you have to reply to the salam. But if you are in a group, someone comes in, I say, salamu alaikum. If someone reply, khalas. You don't need to reply. Let's say, for example, now, I'm giving a lecture. Someone comes and says, salamu alaikum. And you reply, I don't need to reply. Because his reply, he covers everyone's reply. Great. Now, if ever you are praying and someone comes and says salamu alaikum alone you are alone in the house or whatever and then someone comes and says salamu alaikum and nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam one day he was praying and a sahabi came and says salamu alaikum to him he didn't say anything and after the salah, he met the sahabi. And he told him, you made salam to me while I was praying. And he did not tell him that whatever you did was something wrong. One other time, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was making salah. And the sahabi came and said salam to him. What did he do? He replied to him by moving his fingers by making a gesture. In another incident, it happened that the Sahabi came while he was praying, I said, Salaamu Alaikum. He replied with his head. And another time, he replied with his hand, making a gesture. So, if you're praying alone, and someone, if you're praying in a place where there's no one in the office, in the house, in the masjid where no one is there, someone comes and says, Salaamu Alaikum to you. You have to reply. Either while you're praying, you raise your hand. You don't need to say, Wa Alaikum Salaam. Because now you're having interaction with you and Allah Azza wa Jal. He comes and says, Salaamu Alaikum. We reply either with the head, not the head. Carry on your salah. Oh, you do like this. Oh, with your fingers. You just do this and carry on your prayer. When you know that there was no one to reply to his salah, but if ever you are in the masjid, you know that other people will reply to his salam, do you reply? No, in that case you don't reply. Because someone else has already replied in your place. You understand? Only if you are alone and there is no one to reply the salam, then you reply the salam. You are in the house alone. Your kids come in, Salaamu Alaikum Baba. You reply. Yes. Not the head, simple. This is something that we may do. Maybe we never knew before, we were not aware, and this is something that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did. And something that we may do as, as well. This is something that we can tell our wife as well. Sometimes they are praying. Let's say now, you go back home. Your wife alone in the house. You open the door, you say, Salaamu Alaikum. And she's praying. She won't reply. Because she's in Salah. Let her know that she can reply. Just raise her hand. That means you have replied to me. Because, didn't we say last week that saying Salaam is Sunnah and replying it is? Replying salam is wajib. So she has to reply. If your kid has replied, okay, khalas, she doesn't have to reply. If no one replied, then someone has to reply to your salam. 
So then she just raised her hand, or she nod her head, or she did with her fingers. Three ways the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, taught us how to reply a salam while we are praying. Yeah, so this is something that we may do. Next point, can we say salam to someone who's reading the Quran? If you can say salam to someone who's read, who is making salah, definitely you can make salam to someone who's reading the Quran. And that person who is reading the Quran, that person who is reading the Quran, what he has to do is stop I say, wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullah and continue. That's it. No gesture. The gesture is done only when you are in salah. If you are reading the Quran, some people say, ah, no, he's reading the Quran. Don't say salam to him. You're going to disturb him. No, no. If you can say salam to someone who is, who is praying, then you can say salam to someone who's reading the Quran. It's something that you can cut him. No problem. I'm reading, someone says salamu alaykum to me. I stop, say wa alaykum salam, and I would be like, continue my qira'ah. It is dislike to greet someone when they are in the washroom, when they are in the toilet. At that moment, it is dislike for you to greet them and it is dislike for them to reply to the greeting. It happened to the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and then he did not reply back because he said, I hate to mention the name of Allah when I am not in a state of purity. So you are in the washroom, someone come and say, Salaamu Alaikum, do you don't reply? After you reply, when you come out, or you wash yourself, make wudu, and then you reply, Wa Alaikum Salaam Wa Rahmatullah. But in the washroom, do not reply to the salam while you are doing your needs because this is what the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not, something that he did not do. So we said that someone can greet someone while he's praying, while he's reading Quran, but not while he is relieving himself in the toilet. At that moment, you do not reply to someone, no, greet someone, and after when you come out, you are in a state of purity, then you can reply to the, to the salam. It is recommended to extend salam when you enter your home. I got that question last week. When you enter the house, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَإِذَا دَخَلْتُمْ بُيُوتًا فَسَلِّمُوا عَلَىٰ أَهْلِهَا Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, when you enter the house, then make salam and greet one another. Literally greet yourself. Mubarakatan tayyiba, which means that this kind of salam that you give when you enter the house, it brings barakah. It expels the shaitan away. So, when we enter the house, what we are recommended to do is every time. We open the door. Bismillah wa lajana wa bismillah kharajana wa ala rabbina tawakkalna. We read the dua of entering the home. Memorize it. You read the dua of entering the house. Once you read this dua, remember you were outside the house. You've been mingling out with the shaytan and the jinn. And then they follow you to your house. And when you enter the house, you say, Bismillah wa lajana wa bismillah kharajana wa ala rabbina tawakkalna. The shaytan said to each other, today there's no shelter for us here. Today there's no food for us here, so let's leave. And then you enter the house, you say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah to the people inside the house. This is when you gain barakah into the house. 
This is when there is no shaitan into your house. When you enter your house, you, your family, your kids, make them understand and read this dua. It's going to save you from a lot of harm. Physically, spiritually, mentally, whatever. This dua is very important. Bismillah wa ladina wa bismillah kharajina wa ala rabbina tawakkalna. And then you enter the house. And then you say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah to your family who are present. And if ever you enter the house, there's no one, what do you say? Assalamu alayna wa ala ibadillahi salihin. Assalamu alayna wa ala ibadillahi salihin. If ever there is no one, some scholars say it's because it could be angels in there and people and species that roam around. You just say, Salamu alayna, salimu ala anfusikum. So you're making salam on yourself. Wa ala ibadillahi salihin. And upon the righteous slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So saying salam upon entering the house is recommended. It brings harmony. It brings peace. It brings safety and love and tranquility in the house. But when you enter the house without saying assalamu alaikum, trust me, all the harm that you faced in your work, you went out in the desert for a picnic, you've gone out and then you've gone to the seaside, to the beach, you've gone out to some market. When you come back while you were out, of course, there's shaitan, there are jinn, there are everything outside. And then when you take all these, you go next to your door. They wait for you. They wait in order for you to bring them together in your house. Once you say the dua and you make salam, they just leave. You enter your house peacefully. That's why Allah says, فَسَلِّمُوا عَلَى أَنفُسِكُمْ فَلَدَخَلْتُمْ بُيُوتًا When you enter the house, Allahu Akbar. Allah mentioned when you enter the house, it shows you how important it is for you to mention the name of Allah when you enter your house. And we want to speak about conveying the prayers, conveying the salam on behalf of someone else. It is okay to do this. It is okay to send salam on behalf of someone else. For example, I tell you, Akhi, if you're going to meet your dad, say salam on my behalf. Adi, you Jews. Even Jibreel alayhi salatu wa salam, he told the Prophet Muhammad wa salam, go and say salam to Aisha radiallahu anha on my behalf. Jibreel alayhi salatu wa salam told the Prophet Muhammad wa salam to go to Khadija and say salam on his behalf from Allah Azza wa Jal. So I can tell you, Akhi, if you're going back home, say salamu alaykum to your dad on my behalf. No problem. This is, it's been reported. But how do we reply? Some people reply as wa alaykum salam. No. We are replying the salam to that person who sent, yes or no? If I tell you, if you come to me and tell me, uh, my mother said salamu alaykum to you. I don't say wa alaykum salam. I don't say salam on you. I have to send salam back to the mother. I say alayka upon you wa alayhi salam. Upon you and upon her is salam. Alayka wa alayhi salam. Alayka wa alayhi salam. Upon you and upon him is a salam. This is how we reply to a salam that has been sent on behalf of someone else. If someone comes and says salamu alaykum to me, say wa alaykum salam. Someone comes and says, Shaykh, someone has said salam to you. My mother said salam to you. I say alayka, peace be upon you. Wa alayhi salam, and peace be upon her as well. Salam. Alayka, if he's a male, wa alayhi salam. So this is the way of replying to the salam when someone has given you on behalf of someone else. Making salam when entering the masjid. Making salam when you enter the masjid. Well, when you enter the masjid, you are recommended to make the dua. Allah maftahni 
أبوابه ورحمتك يا سنو you enter the masjid and when you enter the masjid before you say salam to the people what do you do? you say salam to the masjid and how do you say salam to the masjid? by making tahiyyat al-masjid tahiyyat al-masjid means the greeting of the masjid so you enter the masjid if there's no prayer that has to be made you enter the masjid, you, say, you, made, you make two rak'ah of tahiyyat al-masjid and then you meet your brother, salamu alaykum of course, if the salah has already started you come in straight away and then you join the jama'ah but to enter the masjid and say salamu alaykum in a loud voice, no. If you meet your Muslim brother, salamu alaykum. But to say in a loud voice, salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah, like how some people does, this is no. None of the Sahaba reported that they have done it. Neither the Prophet Muhammad has done it when he would enter the masjid, say loud voice, salamu alaykum. No. You enter the masjid, Allah maftahni abwaba rahmatik. Enter the masjid. Now you're in the place of tranquility, sakina. <coughs> you come in, you make the al masjid, and then you see someone, salamu alaikum. If you enter, and then the jama'ah is on, come straight and meet the jama'ah. If you see someone next to you, salamu alaikum, no problem. But don't raise your voice in the masjid and say, salamu alaikum. Upon entering, this is not what has been reported by any reports. Saying salam while the Imam is giving the khutbah. Saying salam while the Imam is giving the khutbah is makruh, is dislike. The Imam is giving the khutbah, you come in, say tahiyyat al masjid, make salam to the masjid only and sit down. You come in, Imam making khutbah. Make the heat in masjid and sit down. Don't say salam to anyone. Otherwise, you'll force them to reply to you. Because the khutbah, you're not allowed to talk. You can't even tell someone to keep quiet. So the scholar says, when someone is giving the khutbah, and someone come and say salamu alaikum to you, you reply with a gesture. If he comes and shake your hand, you shake his hand, but do not say anything. Do not utter any word because uttering any word in khutbah, it removes your reward of, of Jum'ah. Even you tell your, the people next to you, keep quiet. Your reward of Jum'ah is gone. So while khutbah is going on, you should not talk. Even someone comes say salamu alaykum to you, you reply with a gesture. With a gesture. But do not reply the salam while the khutbah is going on verbally. Verbally. And definitely, we know that whenever you meet a Muslim brother, even though we have a hadith that says salamu qabla al-kalam, saying salam is better than uh, saying salam before speaking. Even though this hadith is weak, we take it as a bounty that yes, before we start speaking to, to anyone, salamu alaikum. Before we speak to anyone, salamu alaikum, kaif al-hal, how are you feeling okay? Assalamu alaikum, how are things going on? Start your conversation with assalam. Make your conversation with ajar and reward. Make your conversation blessed. Mubarak by starting with assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. And then you can speak whatever, whatever you want. And lastly, is even you have to leave a gathering. Look, we started with when you come into a gathering, you say assalamu alaikum. Even though you are leaving the gathering, what do you say? You say, Assalamu alaikum to those who are there. The Prophet Muhammad said, when one of you ends up at a gathering, 
let him extend as-salam. If you're leaving a gathering now, say as-salamu alaykum and then leave him. The one next to you, or anyone can hear you, they just leave. Some people believe that, no, let's leave quietly. No. When you come, say salamu alaykum. The one who can hear you will reply. When you leave, say salamu alaykum. The one who can hear you will reply. So these are the things what we spoke about today in regards to as salam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy upon us to practice them. You have any question, you can ask me. Hada wallahu ta'ala a'lam. Wa jazakum khaira. Salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.